Good morning. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 530 in the hymnal, Table of Plenty, number 530. Let's begin in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord with you. Amen. Thank you. A word of welcome to our first Dominicans and their parents, our guardians. Opportunity we have come together here to pray for them, pray with them as they prepare for their first communion. And welcome to our listeners who are listening to us today. We all come together for one purpose know that we're in need, in need of God in our lives. For times when we fail to see that, we ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us from our sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you make present the reign of God among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence heals our souls. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, which life everlasting. Amen. We want to join together, Gloria. Glory Praise to God in the highest, highest. and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give thanks for your great glory. Glory, glory. 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 glory God, God, Heavenly King, King. O oh God, our Almighty Father, Father. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only God, God Son. Let us pray. O 
O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so, unfa be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place, dwelt pleasing to you. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustula or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to the one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places. And people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. morning. It's really good to have you all here this morning. What a great day to come together on this, the sixth Sunday of our ordinary time. There's other things about our day's gospel I think can fit us today. Today we hear in the gospel about the Jesus leopard. 
a couple things about today's gospel. First of all, we think a lot of times, and preachers all talk, talk about today's gospels, making sure that we do not treat people as they do with leopards. Here the leopards are individuals with um, disfiguring disease, disease there's no cure for, probably the oldest disease in our human history. There's stories of going back to 1500 before the birth of Christ, talking about this disease. See, there's no cure for it. People are out, oftentimes unwanted, put outside. Oftentimes if they were in the community or they were by themselves being separated from the community, they often say unclean, unclean. So people would avoid them. They're afraid of catching that disease. And so we have this leopard coming to Jesus, coming to Jesus to be cured. And oftentimes it was seen as a spiritual warfare that was going on. People with leprosy and other diseases were oftentimes perceived that you, were, you have that leprosy because of sin in your life. You have it because somebody in your family had a sin. As so oftentimes they would see it as only being a way to be cured was to have a spiritual healing. But today we know that there's a physical healing too. Here this man comes to Jesus saying, I want you to clean me. And Jesus does. Jesus does something good. But oftentimes we do something good, something bad happens. You know, some years ago, years ago we said, save the trees, use plastic. Now they were saying, watch out for plastic, we're polluting the environment. Doctors were very strong on using antibiotics. And we're doing so well, they said, well, if you've got any type of illness, we'll give you antibiotics. But now they find out that the illnesses or stuff are becoming attuned to this antibiotic, so they find new ways of healing stuff. Something good, but something negative happened. In today's gospel, Jesus heals this man leprosy. He's unwanted outside the community. Here Jesus does something good. He cures this man diseases, this leprosy. What happens? Jesus is now on the outside. He cannot enter a town or village. They often say Jesus takes on our infirmities. He's now this, the one sort of unclean in the sense that people just want to see him for one reason, to be cured. That's what Jesus was reluctant to cure this man because he knew that once he cured him, people come to him for the wrong reason. Because he wanted people to come listen to his messes, messes of forgiveness, messes of being clean in our hearts and souls. So Jesus is outside, people are coming to him. But oftentimes we can do that to people. We can cause people to be seen as unclean in the sense that they're the wrong color. They're not the same color we are. They're the wrong nationality, the wrong religion, the wrong sex. Different categories are used to people on the outside. Even growing up, people do things like, or kids do things like, you don't fit on our team, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You don't wear the right clothes. So we put them outside our community. It's very much those individuals who can't feel unwanted. But I think there's one key thing that happens with this lep man with leprosy. He comes to Jesus because he's in need. He needed Jesus. And I say that we all should be like the leopard. We also come like to this mass in need of Jesus, Jesus being part of our lives. No, Jesus wants to touch us, to hug us, to welcome us, to make us feel part of the community. Jesus is one with us. We're not alone. There's times we do feel alone, we need to turn to Jesus. And then we in turn are called to reach out to one another. How much does touch make a difference? A glance, a smile, a hug, there's one story about Mother Teresa was visiting the prison. The prison had a lot of inmates in there for, for murder, untouchables. And so one day the guards are announcing to the prisoners, Mother Teresa's coming. One gentleman was in the prison on death row. 
he committed murder, he would not want to see anybody, whether it was the Pope, whether it was the President. We heard about Mother Teresa. We heard things about her. So he came when he saw the people gathering, see who this Mother Teresa was all about. He tells the story that he got to the front of the line, looking through the gate at Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa came up and touched him, looked at him. He says his life has changed forever. He got himself a new trial. Yes, he was guilty, but instead of getting death roll, he's now in prison for life. He realized that his own life, as well as others, was important, was precious. He was touched. He's no longer unwanted, but desired by Jesus. We need to know that we're wanted by Jesus. Jesus wants us to be here, receive his body and blood, he wants to know in the sacrament reconciliation of his forgiveness, that he's there for us. Yes, we're gonna have those times we feel unwanted, but Jesus is there for us. We can feel times we're saying, I'm clean. I can't ex receive Jesus. Jesus won't love me. Jesus won't forgive me. Many reasons we keep ourselves away from Jesus, but Jesus wants us to be near. And so it's time we come here, we bring our kids with us. We're saying, Jesus, I need you. I need you to help me to be a good parent. I need you to help me to be a good son or daughter. Wherever it might be, to know that we're, we stand in need, in need of Jesus. So invite us to be like the leper, coming before Jesus and saying, come heal me, come make me clean, come help me make me know that I'm not unwanted, I am wanted, I am precious. Jesus wants us to be with him each day. At this time, I'm going to invite our first communicants and their parents to come forward as we wind up across the front here, in front of this community rail facing me, with the first communicants in front and parents behind. I know it's going to be crowded, but I'll see if we can get everybody up here with one row all the way across the first communicants in front and parents behind. We have to stretch all the way across. More important to hear me than you see me. So let's feel all the way across, all the way across. Guys, these girls, raise on the ends. Get room over here. My dear parents, on the day of your child's baptism, you accepted the responsibility of training your children in the practice of the faith. Remember that? At the first kid's baptism, you made a commitment to say, yes, I want to pass the faith on. What an awesome responsibility. You're saying, yes, I want to share this faith with my children. We always say that you are the first teachers of children in the ways of faith. So I'm glad to thank you for being with us today. You promised to bring God to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us for loving God and our neighbor. Your children were welcomed with joy in the Christian community by a sign of Christ's cross. Remember that? You made a sign of cross on their foreheads. It should begin their formal preparation of first reception of Holy Communion. I ask you to renew your commitment to the Lord and to his church. And so responds to the following as we are, to the parents. Are you resolved to continue to lead your children to Jesus Christ by word and example? We are. Are you resolved to help your children understand the Eucharist as a source and some of the Christian life by participating faithfully in Sunday Mass and receiving the sacraments? Father Mercy, we thank you for your children who are gathered here today. You have entrusted us, the parents, to this community. You have ever consecrated them in baptism, and now I call them to share in the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. 
We praise you and bless you. I so we invite you to join that response. I'll say one more time. We praise you and we bless you. Together, we praise you and we bless you. Dear children, prepare for first communion. Jesus Christ called you to be his friends. When you were baptized, your parents and your godparents made a sign of the cross on their forehead. The cross is a sign of Christ Christianity, of being Catholic. The cross reminds us of Jesus, how much he loves you. They will sign you with the cross again. Always remember Jesus and believe in him. So invite our first communicants to turn towards your parents and for your parents to make a sign of the cross on their forehead as they did at their, first, at their baptism. Again with your thumb, make a sign of the cross on their foreheads. Now it turns back to you, very good. Lord, you fill these children with the divine life. Help them grow in wisdom and knowledge as prepared to receive the body and blood of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us show our support for these children and for their parents. And now let us all stand. The Lord Jesus, who healed the leper, is ready to bring his grace to all those in need. Through him, therefore, we now pray to the Father. Father, we pray that Pope Francis, all bishops and priests may continue to be instruments of God's mercy to the mission of the church and outreach to those most in need, we pray to the Lord. That world and local leaders may seek the poor and forsaken, giving them the dignity and assistance they deserve as children of God, we pray to the Lord that we may imitate our Lord's compassionate care for the sick and show them that their, their lives are just as precious and valuable as when they are healthy. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who work in health care, that they manifest Christ's love and compassion to all the sick and their families whom they assist. We pray to the Lord that our parish may witness to the truth that the true faith in God is inseparable from self-giving, service, and reconciliation with others, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all married couples, that God will continue to deepen their love and help their relationship give witness to God's loving presence in the world, we pray to the Lord that those who are sick, especially the chronically ill, may be given healing, friendship, and strength, we pray to the Lord. For all who carry emotional wounds, particularly those who have suffered abuse, that God will heal their spirits, renew their hope, and heal them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, May they be received into the joy of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look upon these children who are being prepared to receive the body and the blood, the soul and the divinity of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. May they become more and more aware of the amazing thing that is about to happen, that this is God himself whom they are going to receive. This is the awesome God of the universe. May their whole hearts and their whole lives be changed by this experience. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
And now, merciful and gracious God, we bring you those prayers and intentions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you have eye for all our needs and attended to our prayers. As, bless you, as, as you bless us, may we proclaim your goodness to all our brothers and sisters. We ask that Christ our Lord lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us see it now. The collection is taken up. Today's second collection will go to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 479 in the hymnal, Lay Your Hands, number 479.
and let us stand. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse renew us. May it become for us, for those who do your will, the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory. You came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. You have fastened for us redemption out of mortality itself. The cause of our downfall become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and you rejoice your presence forever. May your voices we pray join with theirs and one chorus extract exalted praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending us upon like the dewfall, become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and we went in his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more again, thanks to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it for the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and turned covenant poured out for you for many forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrate more of his death and resurrection. We offer the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give it thanks how it's worthy to be in the presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we gather to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember, also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of resurrection and all died in their mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother God, St. Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, so with St. Genevieve and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may be coerced to life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in you the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Every command and finds the divine teaching we dare to pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, pray from every evil. Grace to grant peace in our days, that but hope and mercy, we are always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we bless the hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, Let's reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Father. Also for our students preparing for our first communion, anyone who's not receiving communion, you want to come forward, put your arms over yourself, and it will give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to suffer of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 467 in the hymnal. May God bless you, number 467.
Let us stand, let us pray. <coughs> Having fed upon these heavenly lights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which you truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here we have the following announcements. 2014 contribution statements may be picked up at the Parish Center. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Ash Wednesday's mass schedule is 6 a.m., 8 a.m., and 7 p.m. A copy of Pope Francis's letter on his message for Lent is on the tables in church. Everyone is welcome to take a copy. Please think about going on the Christ Renew His Parish Retreat coming this spring. More information about the retreat is in the bulletin and in the parish Lenten letter. The KC Fish Fries will start this next Friday. In your kindness, please pray for the soul of Dolly Okenfus, who died this past week. Visitation is on Tuesday at Bosler Funeral Home from 11 to 1. Funeral service is at Bosler's at 1 o'clock. Our recessional hymn is number 419 in the hymnal. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 419. Also, thanks for being with us this morning. You also this, this week received my Lenten um, letter. If you have not by the middle of the week, please contact the um, Paris office. We'll get you one to you. Um, also think about in that letter, there's a thing about the um, upcoming Christ Jesus Paris retreats. I ask you to think about it. There's one for the men and one for the women. And also, don't forget this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. For God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.